133 consecutive times. The University of Nebraska football team has played to a full house. As Jim Lampley said a moment ago, the sea of red remains intact in Lincoln. The weather, it's been raining off and on most of the week. It's quite a nice afternoon, some overcast, but looks like we might even have some sun before the day is done. The opposition today comes in undefeated. The Oklahoma State Cowboys from Stillwater. They won their first four games of the season. They have won six in a row. They are ranked ninth in the nation. It's one of the highest rankings that university has ever had for its football team. Their most notable victory so far was the opener, a 45-3 route of top Arizona State. They were convincing in beating Tulsa last week. Pat Jones is the coach. And here come the Huskers. They were belted out of first place last week by Syracuse in a 17-9 ball game. This was after they had gone west and walloped UCLA to move into the top spot. It's an unusual experience for the people in the state of Nebraska to have a look at a loss in early October. But they have it this year, so there are some things to ponder in your conversation leading up to the kickoff of this ball game today. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson. Now, the question about Oklahoma State. It's been a long time since the Cowboys have beaten the Cornhuskers. It was in 1961, and I'll give you an example of how long ago that was. Only two members of today's Oklahoma State football team were even born the last time the Cowboys beat the Huskers, but they feel they can do it today. As for Nebraska, how will the team react to having lost last week in a big upset at Syracuse? I talked to Coach Tom Osborne about it yesterday. This is what he said. Well, we're we're not real sure how we'll respond. I think our character level is good on our football team. I expect that we'll play very well tomorrow. I think we'll give a great effort. But uh, again, I guess uh, guess coaches don't know for sure. And I thought a week ago when we went back to play Syracuse, we were really ready to play. And and we didn't play a totally flat ball game, but we weren't as ready as we should have been. And uh, but I predict that both teams will will give a tremendous effort tomorrow. I think it'll just come down to turnovers, breaks, penalties, and those kind of things. That'll be a very close game and probably go right down to the end of the ball game. Coach Frank Broyles is our analyst, as usual, and he has an idea about a little different kind of a problem Nebraska must deal with today. Well, uh, Nebraska is in an unfamiliar, unfamiliar position. They've been the favorite so many times, and the approach you take then is with no emotions. You're business-like. You go out and do a workman-like job, but today I think they need emotion. This is a bona fide Oklahoma State threat. Oklahoma State in the past has not been a threat to them. I think it's going to be difficult for them to come out with the emotion they're going to need to win this game. They will have Jeff Smith back at tailback today, and he will start the ball game. Okay, the idea of raising one's emotional level on the one side of the field. On the other side, Oklahoma State's been flat flying all week. Oh, yeah, this is something they've been waiting for. They've been hungry for credibility, and they've not defeated Nebraska or Oklahoma. Other teams in the conference, yes, so they want to win this ball game. Their problem is being too high. They want to keep their emotion level down so that they won't be making mistakes early in the ball game. And Keith, the key to this ball game, them, I think, is early. How they do in the early goings of the ball game, they need success. You also feel, I think, Frank, that Oklahoma State might have an edge in personnel at some positions? I certainly do. I think at quarterback, at tailback, at wide receivers, they have more speed, more experience. This is something surprising for the Nebraska fans and Nebraska followers, but Oklahoma State has the edge in those positions, and I think it'd be a big factor. And the kicking game, one would expect that Roach, the field goal kicker for Oklahoma State, would give the Cowboys yet another edge. It'll be an interesting afternoon. And so we're ready to go in Lincoln, Nebraska. And it's a great place to come watch a college football game. The Cornhuskers won the toss. They have elected to take the second half kickoff. So the Huskers will be kicking to the Oklahoma State Cowboys. And you have a defensive end who does the returning of kickoffs for Oklahoma State. A young man named Harry Roberts, 205-pound junior from Muskogee. And he's averaging right at 20 yards per kickoff return. Been dry all day today, very comfortable, and the game's on. Way back in the end zone, fielded by Oklahoma State. They'll come out and take the ball at the 20, opening with Rusty Hilger at quarterback, 6'4", 205-pound, fifth-year senior. Sean Jones, a 210-pound running back at a good one. Kelly Cook, the blocking back at fullback, 215. 
Jamie Harris, a multi-talented uh, flanker, and the wide receiver is Terry Weimer. He's a junior from Joplin, Missouri. The Oklahoma State Cowboys, coached by Pat Jones, come up for the first snap of the afternoon, and Hilger turns, gives the ball off to the eye back, John Jones, tells it down, hit hard by Mark Dome, the strong side linebacker. All right, here are the big guys up front for Oklahoma State, who's got to keep the animals off today. Barry Hanna, 6'2", 230, tied in. Paul Blair, right tackle, 250. Ralph Partita, a guard, at 255. David Tucker, the center, is 270 pounds. Derek Burton, the other guard, 270. And Chuck Shankling, uh, the other tackle, is a 260-pounder. And it's second down and 10 from the 20. Jones again with the ball. Works for about four yards out to the 24 before Danny Noonan brings him down. Quickly, the Nebraska defensive unit lines up this way. Up front, you've got Weber, Noonan, Graber, Stuckey, and Strasburger. The linebackers are Munford and Dome, with Daffer playing a lot in there as well. And your secondary is Burke Harris, McCashlin, and Clark. That's a very good secondary. A lot of experience there. It is third down and six for Oklahoma State. Cowboys a 4-0, ranked ninth in the nation. Nebraska ranked eighth. Little quick pop going over there, and the ball pops away and drops to the first. Pass incomplete intended for Jamie Harris. I don't know what in the world's wrong with him because uh, Hilger hit him right in the hands with it. From behind the offense, let's watch it again. Behind the defense, excuse me. Hilger just going to look up, and he holds the ball a little bit too long, allowing the defense to get too close to Harris, although the ball was in his hands, should have been caught. Here is Kerry Cooper. That's C. Kerry, not Gary. 5'10", 155-pounder, little guy, hits left-footed. 38-yard average for him, but has usually very good hang time on his punt. Spins it up there. It's going to stay up pretty well. Probably going to be pretty strong downfield, and ball is taken by Shane Swanson, a wide receiver for Nebraska. He couldn't find anywhere to turn up field. It was a 40-yard punt, and uh, Swanson lost three yards on his return. Nebraska opens up this way with Greg Sunberg, 190-pound senior from Lincoln, hometown boy. Jeff Smith will be at eye back today over the ankle sprain. Tom Rathman coming back at fullback. Shane Swanson, who just returned that punt as the wingback, and Scott Kimball, number 88, is your wide receiver. And they go double wide uh, with uh, Swanson coming way out. Hand it off inside to the up man, Rathman, a 235-pound junior from Grand Island, and he gets about a yard or so, maybe two. Teamer is the tight end. Bryant's 215 pounds. Morrow, Tom, weighs 260 at tackle. Greg Orton is 260 at guard. Mark Twainowitz, 265 at center. Eric Griminger, 265 at guard. And Mark Benning, 290 at tackle. From the 36, second down and eight. Sunberg on a rollout, throws the ball, picked off. It is intercepted by Mark Moore, the right cornerback. And Oklahoma State has the ball first down at the Nebraska 29. Yep. Oklahoma State led the nation in interceptions last year. This year they've already intercepted 11 in the first four ball games. And here's the reason why they can break on the ball. And Sundberg lets it go a little bit late. He should have thrown on the fourth step instead of the sixth. And up comes uh, Moore right in front of him. Catches that ball with one hand and goes down to the 29. So here comes the Cowboys now. They lost to Nebraska 14 to 10 last year when Nebraska intercepted a pass in the end zone at the close of the game. They're hungry. This is Sean Jones, and he's got a yard, and that's all. And I think right here early, Frank, if you're wondering as to how Nebraska is going to react to the loss of last week, it appears their necks are bowed. The Nebraska defense has shown that they're playing with much enthusiasm. They have nine seniors starting on this Nebraska team, and nine of them played last year. A very experienced unit. Second down, call it nine from the 28 of Nebraska. Hilger keeps it, rolls it left. Pressure's on him, pass away. Pass is incomplete, almost intercepted. Lucky to get it back. Oh, Hill just should have gone to the tight end. Hanna was wide open in the flat. Instead, he goes to the wide reflanker, and that was a mistake. You can see Harris 
pushing deep, but the ball is held too long. Once he gets stopped right there, number 11, defensive back Harris, has a good chance to break on the ball. Could have been intercepted. They do have a very good field goal kicker on the sidelines, warming up Larry Roach at 61 to rear three-pointers. Hilger gives the ball to Jones. That won't work. He's down to about the 23, but that's far short of the first down, so it's fourth and four, and we'll see Roach. Roach is hit nine out of 12, 61 career field goals, which is third in the nation in the NCAA record book. He is uh, at 49 yards for his long one this season, his career long one, 56. This is 40. Adam Hines will hold. Adam Hines holds it. The kick is up. Looks good, is good. And so Oklahoma State intercepts Nebraska. They can't punch it into the end zone, but they put points on the board as Roach hits from 40 and the Cowboys lead the Huskers 3 to nothing. The Oklahoma State Cowboys break on top, 3 0. And uh, just tuck it away in your mind uh, that the edge in the kicking game belongs to Oklahoma. It may, Oklahoma State, it may get more prominent, too, before this day is done. Cowboys now with 12 pass interceptions, and you saw Moore pick off his third of the season. Nebraska's return will be Doug Dubose, number 22, and Shane Swanson, number 17, and they're both very quick. Here's the kickoff by Roach. High hanger to the corner, and it goes out of bounds, short of the goal line, so that'll cost him five, and he'll have to redo it. Just going out of bounds, a penalty flag on the play. Many games already completed in the eastern part of the country, and we'll take a brief look at some of them that are coming in. In the fourth quarter now, Michigan State has upped its lead over Michigan 19-7. to Michigan quarterback uh, Harbaugh is out of there injured. Uh, North Carolina State caught Georgia Tech a little lightheaded perhaps and whipped them. 27 to 22, and Pitt won its first game today, beating East Carolina. And uh, Penn State beating Maryland one more time. A uh, note that brings a deep sigh of chagrin from our colleague Tim Brent. Texas Tech jumped all over Texas A&M today. Looks like it's another long season for the Aggies. And Clemson beating North Carolina in the ACC. All right, Roach will put it down and hit this one from the 35. Missouri got off early against uh, Colorado, and the Buffaloes were never in it. Bucknell beat Cornell today, so Maxie Bond. The rambling wreck having a little trouble getting his troops untracked up at Ithaca. Here's the kickoff. It's a yard deep in the end zone to Shane Swanson. He's coming. Two to 25. Harry Roberts uh, brought him down. The Oklahoma State defensive team has been carrying the ball club under certain circumstances. The lineup of Thompson, Harding, Washington, Webb, and Roberts, big, strong, and very quick up front. Those two linebackers are headhunters, too, with Blair, Moore, Hines, and Brown, a very experienced group in the backfield. Brown has five pass interceptions himself. Big Ranger fellow from Gainesville, Texas. First half of the ball game for Nebraska. They give it to the eye back. And Jeff Smith moves it from about the 25 up close to the 30. Pick up the better part of five yards. And the tackle by Munger of Oklahoma State. Number 90. Led the team last year in tackles with 150. He's going to blitz. But that's not a give up. He gets blocked right there real solidly. And then he gets up and tries to get back in the play. Leads the team in tackles with 60 this season. Brought down by pursuit from the backside, Smith averaging over six yards, and he's going to lose a yard on that carry. Leslie O'Neill, number 99, made a sensational play. The young man was all Big 8 last year as a sophomore, made 21 tackles in this game last year against Nebraska. That's a fair matchup in there, Frank. He, they, they list him at 235. That's not true. He's about 255. That's correct. And he's matched up against Mark Benning, the 290-pounder. Smith is out, and DuBose is in now at I-back for Nebraska. Sunberg swings it out to DuBose. DuBose has his momentum taken away from him by the charging defensive end, Warren Thompson, and he gets back to the 30, and the Cornhuskers will have to punt it away. So in their second offensive series, they are unable to pick up a first down as the Oklahoma defensive unit, and Pat Jones, the coach, said very flat, clean yesterday. We expect the defense 
to make the ball game for us. And uh, most coaches uh, agree that Oklahoma State has the best defense in the Big 8 They got 10 people up there right now. The punter looking at 10. The pressure's on. He gets it away. Bobby Riley is back by himself, drifting under it way back at the 14 to 13 on a fair catch. Oh, it was a dandy. Scott Livingston hits one 57 yards and forces Riley into a fair catch. The Cowboys ball at their 15. Pat Jones, well, it's already been Christmas for him. He sort of inherited the coaching job, and he says this about a possible win today. Well, I think it would mean some credibility for this uh, football program. We've had good teams. Uh, I think we're on a threshold of having an excellent, excellent program, and we're on very solid footing now, and I think it's just, you know, it's an opportunity the players are anxious to try to take advantage of. He gets right to the point real quick, doesn't he? Yes, he does. He's, had, he's paid his dues from the high school coach all the way up to the head coach at Rankson College. Thurman Thomas is now the tailback for Oklahoma State. Had a big game against Tulsa. Slides in there for about four yards as he comes to the 19. Brought down by Mark Munford and Ken Shedd for Nebraska. The Nebraska defense last year in their strategy and tactics, they were more stereotype reading. This year, they are penetrating, trying to read on the move. This gives them better pass rush than they had last year. They send Jamie Harris way wide to the top of the picture. Thomas again. And Thomas slanting over the left side, runs out to about the 25. He's close to his first down. Depends on the mark. It looks like the mark's going to be across the 25, and if it is, it will be a first down. Here's Tim Brandt. Okay, Keith, on that last offensive series for Nebraska, Jeff Smith re-injured his ankle. Now, he sat out last week. He's trying to walk it off. You can see him in the background. They're working on his ankle. He's in a great deal of pain right now. We will keep an eye on it for you. Oh, mm, boy. Thank you, Tim. It is a first down for Oklahoma State, just over there, 25. Hilger to Thomas. Thurman Thomas is a 185-pound freshman out of Missouri City, Texas. He ran into Mark Dom, the strong side linebacker for Nebraska. That's a mismatch. Dom weighs 235. Number 51, Dom, very outstanding linebacker, particularly against the run. He's in a stacked defense, meaning he's protected from the blockers. All he has to do is read the play and come in and make the tackle, and he does it beautifully. Two-yard pickup for Thomas, second down and eight. Hills are back. Short pass, good to the tight end. Barry Hanna, the 230-pound senior from Winfield, Kansas, muscles his way up to the 37, and he's going to have another Oklahoma State first down. When I was coaching, I hated for the team to throw to the tight end. That gave my linebackers a fit. Hanna is the leading receiver for Oklahoma State. 11 receptions, that's his 12. Over the ball comes Big David Tucker from Children's, Texas, 270 pounds. J.R. Dillard's at tight end now for Oak State. And Hilger hands it off to his eye back, and nothing doing. Right at the line of scrimmage for Thomas. Jim Scow, number 96, was the leading tackler on that play, and poor Jimmy was the 12th man on the field last week in the Syracuse game. That prolonged possession and ultimate victory for the Orange men. Here's the injury report that Nebraska has been facing coming into this ball game. You can see they've been hurt mainly in the, in the uh, running skill positions. It's really got the coach's word. Here's your back on second down and 10. Throws to the short man. And that really was the only choice he had. He tried to go to Dillard, the tight end. But the tight end in this particular passing formation, Frank, is very close to the line of scrimmage. He's not dragging very deep at all. He should have penetrated in behind the linebacker. Instead, Munger was able to... Uh, pick him up and uh, cover him very beautifully. He was the only man available to Rusty Hilger on that particular instance, too. Now it is third down and ten for Oklahoma State. Here's the blitz. Hilger gets it away. The pass is incomplete. Pretty much running for his life, really. Because he was getting heat over there from number 41, Mark Munford and Danny Noonan. Why do teams move and jump their defense? 
to try to make the offense bust the assignment, and that's what Nebraska was able to do, move the defense around. Yep. Oklahoma State did not pick up the blitz. As we look at Tom Osmond and Pat Jones, Pat, as Keith has mentioned, undefeated head coach. I think he's the only undefeated head coach in America today in college ranks. This is also Nebraska, one of the few teams you'll see two men back on punt coverage. This time Cooper lobs it up there and gets a favorable bounce on it. And it's going to trickle around and roll dead inside the 15 at the 13-yard line. Swanson and Burke were both back there, but neither had a chance to get to the football, and it winds up with a roll, a 50-yard punt. It seems like every Saturday we're seeing an upset. We've seen some today. I talked to Coach Tom Osborne of Nebraska about this yesterday, the element of parity with the 3095 rule. Uh, it seems like uh, this has been a very unpredictable year to this point. I think you've you've all seen that. You guys get around and see more games than I do. But uh, the other thing that may be entering into this thing is the freshman redshirt rule. You know, I think that there's so many teams now are redshirting their whole freshman class. We have not done that here. We do a lot of redshirting in the sophomore year if they are redshirtable players. But uh, when you go ahead and redshirt 17 to 20 freshmen, you get an awful lot of five-year players in your program, and that's what's happening in a lot of schools right now. And it may be causing a certain amount of parity. And when you're 17, 18, 19 years old, a year of maturity means a lot. Nebraska backed up on its own end of the field. Goes from the 13 with Doug Dubo carrying and nothing. The best side of the Nebraska line, most experienced, is bending left tackle, Giminger at left guard, but watch O'Neill, number 99. This is the reason he was all-conference last year. Number 58, Grimmage is blocking on him, but to no avail, as you can see, 99, O'Neill stays there and makes the play, no gain. On the 14, second down. They mark him for about a half a yard on that. A little bit of a delay to DuBose, and DuBose pops it over the right side, gets some daylight, gets out near the 22, but he is still short of the first down. He's got to go just beyond the 23 to get it. Oklahoma State has such speed, and they have so much pressure applied on the passer that they are vulnerable to the fake pass and run. They take themselves right out of the play. Look at the opening there that DuBose has. He has any room to run in any direction, but quick recovery by 99 O'Neill makes the play. Third and two. DuBose, and he's got the first down. He's outside and shoved out of bounds up at the 44. He almost turned that into six points. Adam Hines, the free safety, just got him out of bounds. Let's go back and see that again. How did DuBose get outside of this Oklahoma State defense? Brown, the strong safety, did not support fast enough. Number 27 right there waited, and Grimminger, number 58, picked him up, something that you cannot do against Nebraska. You've got to force from the corners very quickly. And the Cornhuskers now with a little more breathing room up on their own 44, first down. Rathman, the fullback, a yard to the 45. Rathman was hurt last week in the opening kickoff. Well, there's your final. George Perlis gets his first victory over Bosham Beckler in the Big Ten as Michigan State defeats Michigan 19-7 and Florida has shut out Syracuse 16 to nothing. Galen Syracuse, Hall. the team that made all the news and noise last weekend. Galen Hall was assistant coach, moved up to head coach, his second win. Sunberg ripped it out to Swanson. Swanson's got a Nebraska first down as he reaches the Oklahoma side of the field. And Tom Osborne opening up the playbook a little bit now. Right now, let's check in with Jim Lampley at our studios in New York. Keith, it does not get any easier for Ray Perkins at Alabama. First quarter at Legion Field. George already on the board on a 44-yard touchdown run by sophomore fullback Andre Smith. There was Smith again, a 35-yard touchdown run. The dogs are on top 14-zip. Let's go back to Keith and Lincoln. Never count them out. Not as long as Vince Dooley's around there. Here comes Sunberg. Fakes the, looks like he had the bootleg, faking the ball well, hands it off to DeBose. DeBose runs into Harry Roberts, the defensive end for Oklahoma State. You don't often see 205 pounders playing defensive end, but Roberts is so quick that he holds up that corner very well for the Cowboys. There was a gain on that play of inches. Second down and 10. 
Sunberg on the action turns it upfield and reaches the 41. Harry Roberts again on the tackle. Well, I mentioned a while ago that Oklahoma State's last and only undefeated team was 1945. That's the same year the Cubs last played in the World Series. Well, the Cubs are trying to buy a ticket tonight in San Diego against the Padres to go against Detroit in the World Series in 1984. It's Sanderson for the Cubs and Lawler pitching tonight for the Padres at 8 Eastern time on ABC. Tim Lawler was a Razorback, Keith, and took us to the finals in NCAA. The blitz on, and they get him. The two linebackers were really coming, and then a picking up on the other side, the strong safety Brown, and Rod Brown comes in to drop him back at the 48-yard line. Oklahoma State was prepared to play their base defense if they could stop Nebraska. If not, we're going after them with blitzes. This was an inside safety blitz. Number 27, Brown, Tackman, Sunberg for the loss. The loss is back near the 49. So it's fourth down and 14, and in comes the punter, Scott Livingston, who nailed a 57-yarder in his first try. You've got three and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. Bobby Riley is deep for Oklahoma State. Livingston sky high with it, trying to kill it deep. Can't do it. It takes a bounce straight ahead, and Karam's on through the end zone. A 50-yard, 7-yard punt, the first one. This one was good for 49. Not a bad day for Mr. Livingston. It'll be fun to see, see the Horns and the Sooners this year down in the Cotton Bowl next Saturday afternoon. You've got Charles Crawford now in a tailback for Oklahoma State. 230-pound sophomore out of Bristow, and they think he is going to be a dandy. So they're trying to keep fresh backs in there from the 20 out to the 22. There was a big stack, no place to go really on that play. So I guess maybe they're just loosening up Mr. Crawford. Well, the Nebraska defense uh, are very mobile. They move up and down that line very effectively, and uh, there's been very little to run. Here's how the offensive line at Oklahoma State has grown over one year. You look at the bottom figures, 254 to 268. They've averaged vir virtually 14 pounds per man in, in size. Weight training. Good uh, dedication to you. 3 nothing Cowboys lead. Crawford's got the ball. Corner man misses him. He jukes another one and gets loose on the sidelines, and he hits the chalk up on the 33 for a first down. That's a couple of pretty decent moves for the big guy. The word around the big eight is that Crawford, number 32, 230 pounds, runs a 4-5-40. It's got a, has a great career ahead of him. Against Oklahoma, uh, Arizona State, he rushed for an eight-yard average. You can see right here that he's got some moves, not just power moves, some quickness moves as he breaks for the first down. Busted a 44-yarder in the opener at Arizona State. Is an injured player, folks, for Nebraska. Harris, number 11 gives me a chance to set the officials for you too. John McClinick's the referee, Ron Johnson the umpire, Dale Shore is the headlinesman, Paul Brown the line judge, field judge is Butch Clark, the side judge is Terry Turlington, the back judge is Virgil Jeering, and yes that does add up to seven, this being one of the conferences, in fact I guess the only major conference isn't it, that requires seven? They get a chance to experiment with it and it gives an extra man to watch the tight end and how he blocks and, and screens off linebackers. Check in for a moment with Tim Brandt. Keith, you mentioned the fact this is the 133rd consecutive sellout here at Memorial Stadium. What that means, in fact, is more than 75,000 people are here. So, six times a year, Memorial Stadium becomes the third largest city in this state. But more importantly, Hilger, Rusty Hilger, <laughs> has a tough time hearing the signals because the crowd down here is so loud. That's one thing that really bothers the quarterback when he's a visiting, uh, visiting team. Oklahoma State needs to have some success. That'll quiet the the crowd down a little bit. Cowboys are sitting out with a first down right now at the uh, 33 of Oklahoma State. <laughs> it's Crawford. And this time they jumped him pretty well. Jim Scow, number 96, just whipped the block and penetrated. Offensive, defensive tackle should not be able to, to penetrate on this particular play. But Don, number 51, helps on the play. Good linebackers support across the line of scrimmage. They flow down until they see the play. Then they penetrate. They attack. Number 96 was the first man on the play. Then Don helping out. Loss of a yard. Second down, 11 from the 32. 
Rusty Hill's the back. Swings the pass out and off the hands of Charles Crawford. I don't think Charles was going to go anywhere anyway. It was good defensive flow to that side, and Hilger now is one out of eight for nine yards. His Hilger's percentage for the season is 55%. His career percentage, he's a third-year starter. Young man who came there to Oklahoma State weighing 165 pounds. He weighs 25. But the Nebraska defense has been very impressive in pursuing the ball and also breaking on pass patterns. Third and 11. Double covering both receivers. Play action. He'll just pass his caught. Beautiful catch by Terry Weimer at the Nebraska 49-yard line. He, he threw it hard. It turned into a bit of a knuckleball, Frank, but it's one of those kind, I guess, that's easy to catch. When you throw the ball in the middle, you have to time it perfectly because the linebackers are in front of you and the safety man behind you, and you can see that Weimer was just in behind. Let's isolate on him and just see what a perfect throw it was. As McCashman, number two, played him man for man, was covering him in front, and, of course, 33 Burke behind him. And it's Cowboys at the Nebraska 49 first down. Crawford outside. Oh, he lays a lick on Dave Burke, the cornerback coming up. He just dropped his shoulder and hammered him. A big man like Crawford is 6'4", 230 pounds. Doesn't look like Keith. He's that fast, but he just broke outside and there was no one there, which means that he does, he does have excellent speed. Gain is down to the 43. Six-yard pickup, second down, four. Crawford stumbling, never got going. Never had his balance that time, so he gets to the line of scrimmage, barely. Both of these football teams offensively feature the I-formation tailback, power plays, a few play-action passes. They try at all costs to avoid third and long. Neither team are very good on third and long. I'm not sure the eye formation is a very good formation on third and long. No, you have to get the backs out where they can get out in the class a lot faster than the eye formation allows. Thurman Thomas is now in at the eye back spot. Rusty Hills here under pressure, throws it back the other way to Malcolm Lewis. Malcolm Lewis has a convoy down the sideline. And he, he got penalty flags thrown, and I think he hit the chalk over there. Looked like one man was going to mark it. But now he walks away from the mark, so let's see about the penalty. It's a clipping penalty. Uh, he, I think that the Missouri lineman, it was a screen pass. They had uh, put uh, Lewis at tight end, surprised, and nobody was covering the tight end. Uh, Oklahoma State had slipped the, the uh, wide receiver, Lewis, in at tight end. And then it was a tight end screen, beautifully executed. Well, he had a convoy down there. They had that one Nebraska defender outnumbered five to one. It was a silly place to make a clip, but that's what it is, and that's what the official was marking on the sideline was the point of the clip, which was down about the 13-yard line. Goodness gracious, I don't know what happened to the Nebraska defense. Who's in? On the offense, there'll be a first down. Nebraska must have blitzed everybody. You can see them coming hard right there. Scow 75. You can see Lewis number eight. Let's see if we can detect the clip. Right there. I couldn't see who it was, but somebody unnecessarily left their feet. But it's still Cowboys first down at the Nebraska 27-yard line instead of adding the touchdown. And they are still at the 27 as Thurman Thomas had no chance. And Ken Graber, the middle guard, came blowing in. The big center, a senior from Minneapolis, Minnesota perfect time to use a run blitz is after a big play. First and ten, Nebraska brought everybody. The strong safety and the weak cornerback and the linebackers. Successfully, too. A little note of history for you, for the Oklahoma State followers. Rusty Hilger is now past the great Bob Fenimore as the number three all-time OSU passer. 2,559 yards. Nebraska's got to be called that time for encroachment as the contact was made just at the snap. I'm not sure that I wouldn't have gone ahead and, and run out that play. Keep the, the oh, they call it on Oklahoma yeah. State. The officials have to stop the play. It's an automatic dead ball once the offensive lineman moves, and the play cannot count. Ralph Partita, the right Full guard, start on the offense. was the man that moved, the senior out of Dallas, Texas. 
So Oklahoma State now trying to take itself out of scoring position coming up next Saturday in that traditional matchup which we told you about between Texas Oklahoma. This week Texas ranked number one playing Rice tonight and Oklahoma is idle. Sooners ranked number three so they figure to stay there. Down the middle goes the pass and the pass is incomplete as Brett Clark number 10 came up and made contact just as the ball arrived. He also had uh, some help from Dave Burke as intended for Terry Weimer. Free safety's responsibility is to cover deep first, though when you've got a good experienced one like Clark, this was all big eight last year, he anticipated the throw in front of him and just searched the receiver and knocked the ball loose. I thought maybe Hilger might have been a tad late on the throw. He was, Keith. If he'd thrown the ball on the break, it'd have been completed. Gives Burke the safe banana chance to break on the ball. Put it on the 33 now and make a third down and 16. Put him back on the 43 and make it a punt, not a place kick, as Jim Scow came blowing in from his defensive tackle spot. Nebraska this year used a lot of situation substitutions by passing down. They put in two fresh tackles and a linebacker. First quarter is over, and it's just about what we expected. So far, a defensive standoff Oklahoma State leading. 3-0 Oklahoma State Cowboys leading Nebraska as we go to the second quarter. Kerry Cooper is in now to punt on fourth and long. Obviously, he's going to try to kill it deep. The best kind of a kick to do that is a knuckleball it up there. And he's got some spin on it. It's a tail dragger, and it takes that bounce and goes right on into the end zone. You don't want that. You want that nose down, or you want a flopper. Just get up there and knuckle around and flop around so that your people have a chance to put it down. But he had spin on it. Let's check in with Tim Brandt. Keith, the injury problems for Nebraska continue. They're working on Neil Harris right here, the starting defensive back for Nebraska. He has a strained leg, and he may not be back. He's awfully sore right now. On an optimistic note, though, we just talked to the doctors. Jeff Smith, his ankle has been retaped, and he's going to try to come back into the ball game. Sure. Here we go now with uh, DuBose carrying the ball. And from the 20, DuBose hits it out to about the 24. Here are the first quarter stats. You can see that Oklahoma State has the upper hand in every category. Oklahoma State had four possessions. The Nebraska's one, allowing Nebraska only one first down. The Oklahoma State defense playing extremely well. But after they had the big plays, it got them down on Nebraska's side of the field at the 27. They made a bunch of mistakes. They made one mistake that cost them a touchdown. Dubose again. And gets hammered as he comes up to the 28. So they'll be looking at third and two. The Temple Owls. They're a tough team this year. Yale winning big. And Pennsylvania looks like the class of the Ivy League right now, doesn't it? BYU rolling right along. Holy Cross undefeated, beating Dartmouth by 10. And South Carolina undefeated, winning big today. This is Sunberg. Sunberg dumps it off. Pass is caught. Sunberg unloaded the pass, just sort of a lob job as he was hit, and Scott Kimball went up to get it, completed it for under about the first down. From the end zone, you'll see the fake is what makes this play. Two backs faking in the line of scrimmage. Everybody loses the ball. Good faking by the tailback to both. Finally, Sunberg just lobs it open, open, up because Kimball is so wide open, he has plenty of time to catch the ball. And the Huskers are on their own 39 with the first down. Here's the blitz. That movement. Oklahoma State evidently is going after the Nebraska offense with a lot of different stunts, gambling. Which causes an offensive lineman sometimes to move a little too soon. Yes, it was a play they had called where penetration would have hurt it, pulling both the guard and tackle to lead the ball. Oh, ball start on the offense. It is still first down. First flag of the day on the Cornhuskers. The ball comes back to the 34, where it'll be first down and 15. I'll tell you, when you got people lined up a little with their nostrils flared and you're an offensive lineman and you can't use your hands except to a limited degree, you want to dig a trench so you can get a foothold. You want to get your feet set, Chief, that's right. Sunberg back, gets his pass off downfield to both coming out of the backfield, makes the catch at the Oklahoma State 40. 
Well, when DeBose comes right out of the backfield, it depends upon the linebacker and safety, and Oklahoma State did not have a safety, and Sundberg lays it in there perfect. Look how wide open he's behind everybody. Finally, Brown, number 27, comes over and makes the tackle. Good read by the quarterback, Sundberg. That Oklahoma State man got there a little late, and he was in spearing position. He managed to pull himself away. Otherwise, there would have been another flag and a 15-yard penalty on it. Here's the pitch back to DeBose, trying to go to the outside. And number 40 collars him James Ham, a junior out of Merritt Island, Florida, and slows him down. Well, this is the first uh, little drive that Nebraska's been able to put together. Both of the big plays have been on passes. Oklahoma State gambling and leaving the coverage is uh, kind of bare back there. Jeff Smith, as we reported earlier, re-injured his sprained ankle. They've re-taped it, and he hopes to come back, and he is back. Smith is back. Just came on the field at Ibach for Nebraska. And it's second down and seven. They give it inside to the fullback, Rathman, and Tom Rathman at the 33 of Oklahoma State. So, again, it'll be third down and short. Last time they had third and short, they went deep with a pass, and it worked. Tom Osmond is a master at play calling, using the surprise element. I think most football games are won and lost by surprises. Strategy is what Osmond is very good. Let's call this the 34 of Oklahoma State. And third down and a short four. Swanson comes in motion. They run it, and Jeff Smith runs it inside the 30 to the 28. There's a penalty flag on the field thrown by a linesman. Nebraska raised this, out their snap count, and Oklahoma State couldn't couldn't sit there. They've got the first down. Probably the play is a little longer than a five-yard penalty, huh? Yes, they refused the penalty. Our side. On the defense, decline. First down. Oklahoma. Ball at the Cowboy 28. On defense, Oklahoma State's been gambling, and uh, Nebraska's been able to pick it up enough just to make some first downs. Oklahoma State's got to make a big play if they're going to stop them on, for their defense. Yeah, they want to stop them here because this is one of the beginning of a Nebraska roll, perhaps. I don't know who's going to cover Smith out of the backfield. They've got to make an adjustment. They go to Rathman. And what did Smith do now? He cut back inside, didn't he? So they really didn't tip off anything, but they had moved Smith up into a, what amounts to a slot position or a, really a wingback position. And they give it to the fullback. 99 O'Neill is a big eight conference tackle last year as a sophomore. He's, he has great speed. He doesn't play straight ahead plays at him too effectively. He runs off the good. Gets blocked by Benning right there. Sunberg going down the line on the option. Picks out to Jeff Smith, and Smith is really hammered. As he crosses the 25 to the 23. So they'll see. Now from the 23 to the 18, they'll need about five yards on third down. And who's down? Rathman? Yes, number 26. Tom Rathman, the fullback, is hurt and being helped off the field. Now, Tom was hurt last week in the very opening kickoff in the game against Syracuse. He came back to play a little bit in the second half. He had a, a concussion in the ball game last week, but he also had a sprained ankle on the same play. That looks like the ankle again, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. Another third and four or five. He just position in Oklahoma State. I don't know whether the blitz or play it safe. Let's see what they do. Well, they're coming. Scott Porter is in at fullback. And Sunberg, watching those linebackers and sensing blitz, spends a timeout. He doesn't want to fritter away an opportunity this deep on the Oklahoma State end of the field with the Cowboys leading 3-0. It is third down and about five for Nebraska. And if they don't make the first down, then we're going to be looking at Dale Klein, the place kicker for the Huskers, who has not attempted a field goal in 1984. Sunberg is back. He's got a man. He throws it short. Intercepted. And it's intercepted. Adam Hines. He had his man down there, Todd Crane, but he couldn't get it to him on time. Hines number 14 has intercepted eight passes last year, has two right now. You can see that he's defeated on the play. Number 80 is behind him, Breen, but 
Hines was a quarterback. He knew where to get at the right time. He was a starting quarterback for Oklahoma State two years ago. And so the Huskers are turned away on the interception, the second in the ball game for Oklahoma State. They have 13 on the year, and they go to work with Sean Jones. And so far, the uh, Nebraska defensive people have contained the Oklahoma State running backs, and there are three of them. Keith, on that last play, Sunberg could have run for at least the first down. He yeah. was outside, but he saw the receiver open, brain for the touchdown. But what really has been effective for Oklahoma State in prominent role is the rush. Even though they didn't have it on that last play, they have had the rush. That's caused the interception. Second down and eight from the 22 for the Cowboys. Jones cuts it back to the 26. Tim Brandt. All right, Keith, Travis Turner, the quarterback for Nebraska. He's been running second team, but right now he's taking snaps. Travis Turner will be in the next series for Nebraska. So they're going to sit Sunberg down, try to shake things up, and try to get this offense moving. Turner's a little more mobile, perhaps, back there, and he'll call his own number some. Right now, Charles Crawford comes into the backfield for Oklahoma State. Lines up with Kelly Cook out of the I formation. Third down and four. Come on, Quick little quick stand up top over here to Malcolm Lewis and Lewis has got a first down for the Cowboys up near the 35 where Dave Burke wrestles him down where does an experienced quarterback make a difference in a ball game third and short yards the blitz is on he uh, sights the just and raises up and hits the wide receiver a simple little pass and the first down result well, Rusty's 6'4", too, so that height gives him better than average visibility. He can throw from close to the line of scrimmage, Keith. After big, they throw on it, three steps, drop right. a lot of times. Cowboys sitting up near the 35, first down. They lead 3-0 with 9.25 to play in the second quarter. Here comes the reverse. Jamie Harris almost lost it, and then slides out of bounds for a loss back to the 32. The man who came in and spoiled the play was number 31, Charlie Cartwright. Noonan is a young man that has not been redshirted, number 95. His assignment, watch him charge on, on even the first down play. He's penetrating, and he messes up the ball handling enough that Harris could not regain the balance to make any yards. Good play by the top. Second down, about 12. That's uh, the big guy, Crawford. And he's back over the 35. So they're looking at third down and about nine now. Here's Pat Jones. Been the head coach only since June and had a ringing endorsement from the players and the people at the university. And he was elevated and he's 4-0 and, oh, and I guess only undefeated coach in Division I for, the, for his career. Hilger, a little pop to the sidelines to Malcolm Lewis. And he turns it back upfield, and they've got him short of the first down. He turned the wrong way. He should have turned to the outside. If he turned outside and stretched it out, he'd have got his first down. At the line of scrimmage, the quarterback sees 101 coverage, a deep cushion. And as Keith mentioned, if Lewis had turned outside, he would have been able to make the first down. Instead, he picked up, ran into three Nebraska Huskers. Nebraska slow getting the punt team out there. Cooper's kick is away. And a fair catch is called back at the 24-yard line by Dave Burke. 8.04 to play in the first half of the ball game, and Oklahoma State still leading 3 to nothing. Jim Lampley in New York. Here's the score in the one game involving a very highly ranked team being played right now. Purdue has just gotten Everett's second touchdown pass to stay close, but for the 11th straight game, Keith Byers has scored two touchdowns. He also helped set up the field goal. He also ran back a kickoff 61 yards. Does just about everything. Back to Keith Jackson. Here, okay, Jimmy. Here, it's Oklahoma State 3-0 over Nebraska. Huskers had a pretty good drive the last time. Let's see what they do behind Travis Turner now. A junior from Scotts Club at quarterback. Smith and Rathman are back in the backfield, and Smith has the ball. And Jeff turns it up for a fairly decent gain from the 24 out near the 27. Three, maybe four on the carry. In the first four ball, ball games, Turner had taken 11 snaps, excuse me, had thrown 11 passes, completed four. Had played very, very little, 
in any of the first contest, four contests. But he had run 13 times and picked up 40 yards. I think that's probably the reason that, uh, as you mentioned, Tom wants him in there. Doug DuBose now in at Ibach. Smith looks skippy. Turner flips the ball out to DuBose, and he is corralled by the Cowboys. I've never seen more blitzes and more all-out blitzes than Oklahoma State are using against Nebraska. A young quarterback hadn't played much. Why wouldn't you blitz him? Bring everybody. And that's exactly what they did and threw him for a loss. Boss is back to the line of scrimmage, the 24 where it's third down and ten. Situation substitutes have come in. Six backs for Oklahoma State. They're blitzing again. He gets the pass away from the pressure was coming from the blind side. The pass is complete to Swanson, but it is short of a first down. And the kicking team comes out for the Cornhuskers. You can see the rollout pass trying to get away from the blitz. That's a good call by Tom Osmond. One-on-one situation. Anytime you have a blitz, just move out and get the ball there. But the receiver did not run deep enough. He should have run the out pattern enough to make the first down. Livingston in the punt. His two kicks have been big ones, 57 and 49. Bobby Riley is deep for Oklahoma State. Penalty flag. Looks like a call against Nebraska. Well, the, the Oklahoma State charged the neutral zone, and Nebraska moved, but the uh, man was up, and it shouldn't be, should wipe the penalty off. The linebacker, they made a mistake. There'll be no flag. No, they didn't. They wiped the it off. On the well, they, 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 yeah. they wiped it off. Right. See, the, the, off, the offensive linemen are not taking the three-point stance. They're still in up position, and they can move around and not be illegal. This is a good crew of officials. I watched them a long time. Ten men coming. Oh, it looks like they're coming. He didn't get all of this one. Riley back at the 26. Comes back to the 30. 31. Six-yard return. 43-yard punt. 6.05 to go. First half. Oklahoma State leading the rest of Three to nothing. Our crowd is 76,368. Oklahoma comes to the snap. First down at their 31, leading three to nothing. Sean Jones, the Ibex. He has the ball, and they've controlled him so far today. Yard maybe two on that carry over the right side. We're seeing a good defensive struggle, and uh, I think that was really to be expected is the defensive uh, units of both of these teams rank very high. You can see the Cornhuskers in total defense lead the nation. 206 yards per game, but they also are second in scoring defense, rushing defense six, total defense six. The Oklahoma Cowboys. State's okay. fifth in defense. So they're both pretty good. This is Zachary in at fullback. Ken Zachary, a junior from Sepulpa, and he hits it out near the 36 in the penalty flag. Well, the flag is right Ken to the umpire. Zachary. It's on the offense nine out of ten times. Ten yard penalty. One thing the Oklahoma State offensive coaches told me, they want to avoid long yardage. They just don't have the type of uh, offense to pick up long yardage on second and third down. They're very conservative on those situations. In comes the situation substitutes for... Hold in. On the offense, it is still second down. For Nebraska. Here's the tailback story for Oklahoma State so far. Jones, 20 yards, Thomas, 12, and Crawford, 21. Well, that'd be a great ball game tonight between the Cubs and the Padres. 8 o'clock Eastern Time here on ABC. Second down and 20 as the ball comes back. And I think they burned the clock there, didn't they? Well, they moved, Keith. Uh, they couldn't wait. Uh, Nebraska's shifting their defense. Well, this is what happened to them while ago when they looked like they were going to go in and at least get another three points, if not a touchdown. And they got down at 27 of Nebraska and then mistaked themselves all the way back to midfield. Well, since early in the first Central, quarter. First start on the offense. It is still second down. Since early in the first quarter, the Nebraska defense has dominated and controlled virtually anything that 
Oklahoma State's offense have tried. Cowboys have been flagged five times in the game for 40 yards with five minutes to play in the first half. But they lead three to nothing. He'll do that little quick pop over here to Lewis. And Lewis gets out to the 27. So they'll be looking at third down and 14 as Scott Strasburger, a defensive end, dropped off on that play to help out. He's going to pick one off before the game's over. He's anticipating the quarterback change in the play, and he's dropping third off down, after 14. the snap, and he came close, as Keith mentioned, to getting in the line of fire and catching that one. Crawford comes back at tailback. Hilger throws it. Lewis catches. First down. Oklahoma State. The ball is on the Nebraska 42-yard line. David Brett Clark made the tackle, but oh boy, there was almost an interception over there, Frank. Excuse me, Keith. David Burke makes the mistake of going for the ball without getting part of the receiver. You can see that he goes in front. The in teaching defensive backs, you, if you're going to go in front, get part of the receiver. Get part of the receiver. If you get the ball, if you don't get the ball, at least you get the receiver. And uh, Clark had to pull him down. You can watch Burke, number 33, goes in front. He shouldn't have done it. Should have gone through the receiver. Cowboys from the first down play, handed off, trying to get something out of their running game, more than two or three yards. But so far, they haven't been able to do it. Crawford carrying that time. Hilger now has become the number two all-time passer at Oklahoma State as he reaches 2,615 yards. Second Oklahoma down State nine. just made up a second down and 20 with two passes to the weak side. Completion making the first down. Second down and eight. Option play. Hilger, the quarterback, keeps it and runs down to the 36 where Strasburger brings him down. Rusty 6'4", 205, being kind of long and lanky. It takes him a little while to get wound up and going. But he showed a little burst of speed, I thought. I didn't know he had that kind of speed because he beat the defense to the corner and made a nice game. 3.15 to go, first half, 3-0 Oklahoma State. And the Cowboys are punching their way down on the Nebraska side now. Hilger back. Little quick pop thrown over there, incomplete, intended for Terry Weimer and defended by Dave Burke. This time, Burke goes through the receiver, and uh, the pass falls incomplete. Didn't make the same mistake twice. He's an experienced player. This Nebraska secondary started last year all 13 ball, 12, yeah, 13 ball game. It's fourth down and a short four, and they're going to punt. Cooper is in. Well, he's hit it too far. Trying to kill it deep inside the 10, and he just kicked it too far. Keith, we talked about what you mentioned earlier. You need to hit the ball, the kicker, on the front part of the ball, yep. not the back. Right. You hit it on the front, it will not roll forward. We'll be right back after this. 3 nothing. Oklahoma State leading here as uh, Nebraska comes up first down at the 20. Three minutes to go. The handoff goes to DuBose, and DuBose comes out to about the 25. You saw just a flicker there of Purdue going ahead of Ohio State in the fourth quarter, 21 to 17. Mm, boy, if Purdue should hold on to win, that means we're going to have probably one and two squaring off next Saturday in Dallas, Texas, Oklahoma, and Texas. Oklahoma was ranked number three. Uh, Jim and Bino will bring you up to date on everything that's going on. That Purdue team's a pesky bunch in that Big Ten this year. This is DuBose trying to spin to the outside, and he's going to lose a half a yard on that effort. Frank, there just isn't any room in that middle today for either side, is it? Both teams are so quick that they get off the blocks and make the play. Now, this will be interesting to see if Tom's going to the air with his backup quarterback. If he's going to play in the rest of the ball game or play in the rest of the year, he's got to show confidence right here. Third and long. Third and about six. Yep, going to put it up. No, he isn't either. Number 42, Rodney Harding. Defensive tackle from Oklahoma City. Put him on his back. 
Harding, number 42, was a defensive end, a linebacker. He runs a 4-7. He just whips the tackle. Mara, number 77, just goes right back and throws the quarterback turner for a loss. That's his third sack of the season. Last year, he had 10. And with 149 showing on the clock, Oklahoma State now has called timeout. In order to give them a chance to, they'll have, what, two timeouts remaining now. Uh, one time, uh, two timeouts remaining. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, as you saw Frank Gifford telling you a little while ago, the undefeated San Francisco 49ers against the Giants. The Giants went through one of those nightmares against the Rams last week. Everything they touched blew up in their face. Had three safeties against them in the, in the third quarter, but they've got Bill Sim healthy, Keith, and uh, he has the capability. And Lawrence Taylor rushing uh, Joe Montana should be a heck of a contest. Joe's getting better, too. He had bruised ribs for a while, but wearing the black jacket. He's come back. And Missed one ball game and back last shape, week. Yeah. Undefeated San Francisco. The Nebraska guy. now is going to have to kick that football from right back around the 15-yard line. They need a big one out of Livingston right here. He's had two big ones, actually three big ones today. Oklahoma State seems to be going after the, the rush. Well, he's got a low-line drive to Riley. That'll give him some room. And he gives the Cowboys pretty good field position up on their own 45. It was a 51-yard punt. But it was a low-line drive, and it gave Riley time to come back 11 yards at 138 to play in the first half. Well, you missed a play while we were away. If you're a Cowboy fan, it's one you'd want to miss. Thurman Thomas lost a yard trying to cut it over the left side. So it's second down, 11 and a half. Hills are back. That little short swing to the back coming out of the backfield. Crawford, uh, Thomas, rather. Thurman Thomas, 34. And Thomas steps on the line up at midfield, and that leaves him about five yards short of the first down with one tick less than a minute to play in the first half. And as Keith mentioned, the Cowboys have two timeouts, but they are a high-passing team that has much as much a two-minute offense as some others we've seen this year. They haven't thrown the ball to the right side once yet. All to the short side of the field, which is the safest side to throw to. This one's down the middle, and it's Thomas, and he's got a lot of green. And a first down at the Nebraska 22. Timeout. They should call timeout. They do. There's the time remaining. Thomas got out there in the open field, and he turned on the Jets, didn't he? Well, the linebackers were chasing uh, back to cover deep, and uh, Thomas, number 34, goes right through the line of scrimmage and obviously the late blitz you see number 41 a month of rushing there and just takes himself right out of play look at the wide open air that's what happens when you gamble with your linebackers and the quarterback hits the back over the line of scrimmage a big play resulted oklahoma state now will have one time out to work with and they may want to save that so they can kill the clock if necessary to get their field goal kicker into the ball game it is first down Cowboys at the Cornhusker 22 with 49 seconds to play and Oklahoma State leading three to nothing. Thomas is just a freshman and he showed some real experience there catching the pass and moving right down the center of the field for a big, big game. As we look at Pat Jones, Houston Nut, uh, the wide receiver coach, they're trying to make their plans, decide what they want to do. It's time to get excited. <laughs> they got Crawford at the eye back. Hilzer is caught before he ever got a chance to effect the option by Brad Smith, the defensive end from Franklin, Nebraska. Smith just stepped in there and messed everything up. Hilger, well, Oklahoma State here, Frank, has spent the last time out. That surprised me, but I guess it's rather do that than waste a first down, a down by throwing the ball out of bounds. But Hilger running the option play should have been read to pitch. The reason that you run the option play in a situation like this is to get a run down the boundary. And uh, when the end blitzed, all he had to do was lay it out, but he didn't do it. He kept the ball, and, and the end tapped him for a loss. Here's well, the strategy meeting. You talk about quarterbacks running the option. you got Bradley down at Oklahoma. Very good at it. You, of course, you had some great ones at Arkansas, and Texas has had some marvelous. I think it'd be kind of fun to see Doug Flutie working in an option, <laughs> wouldn't it? Oh, my goodness. If you force the coaching team 
of Flute is to play defense to stop the option. He didn't tell how many passes he threw. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I wouldn't want to try the defense. Yes, Jack Bignell's doing pretty well with what he's got. I'm, I'm not going to suggest no. he change the thing. Here's what Western Hill just done. He's 15 yards to break the whole time. OSU passing yards. Right. It's second down and 12. Going for the corner. He may not get it back. He won't. It is intercepted by Dave Burke. Well, they throw away a scoring opportunity. David Burke, number 33, is going to play it beautifully. He has no reason to come up and play a short pass. The fake of the short throw had no pull on him whatsoever, but he makes a sensational over-the-shoulder catch. I saw him practicing this before the, the ball game. Those defensive backs catching the ball like an outfielder going over the shoulder. With 37 seconds to play now, Nebraska has one timeout remaining. And trail by three. Three to nothing. This is Doug DuBose. And DuBose runs it out from the 20 to the 25. Nebraska will be content to just run the clock out and go in and regroup. In fact, both teams are going to have to regroup their offense, I think, as defenses are certainly dominated this first half. Well, I'll tell you, in hindsight, I don't know. They may look back at that pass call and kick themselves on that one. This is DuBose again, out close to the 30. They'll stop him at the 29. And they've waved the clock dead here to see whether or not it is a first down, and it's not. So they'll roll it again, and we'll run off six seconds, and the first half will be over. DuBose now with 54 yards in the first half on 12 carries. And the first half has come to a close here at Memorial Stadium at the University of Nebraska. Been a tough, hard-headed, defensive ball game to this point. And Oklahoma State at halftime has the lead. By a score of three to nothing. And here's Coach Pat Jones down with Tim Brown. Keith, Pat, we talked before the ball game. You told me about the quickness on defense, but you're playing games up front. You're blitzing, and it's causing them problems. We're mixing it up a little bit. Uh, you know, we plan to do that going in. We're trying to take advantage of our speed and quickness, uh, which we can run. All right, now offensively, has yet to get on track. It's made a lot of mistakes, Pat. Well, we've had some silly penalties that cost us bad. We've moved the ball around in midfield, which we have rested our defense some. Uh, but we need to get us some points offense. We had that touchdown call back out there. What do you tell these guys at halftime now? Keep on playing. Try to win three to nothing. All right, Pat. Good luck okay. in the second half. We'll continue with our halftime activities here at Memorial Stadium after this commercial and a word from your local station. Stay with us. To the 30. So here's your new rule going into effect now. He hits the ball, knocks it beyond the end zone, and the ball, instead of coming to the 20, will come out to the 30. This is the defensive unit for Oklahoma State. Warren Thompson, 215-pound in. Harding's 240-pound tackle. John Washington, we haven't heard much of him today. The big nose guard, but he's been making a lot of noise inside. So is O'Neill, and David Webb is the defensive end at 200 pounds. Matt Munger, a linebacker, two and a quarter. And Ham, a linebacker, at two and a quarter. And here goes Doug DeBose with a sweep to the outside. And he got around the corner pretty well before Rod Brown brought him down. The defensive secondary for Oklahoma State lines up with uh, Stanley Blair, six footer, 190. The other corner is Mark Moore, six foot, 200. Adam Hines and Rod Brown are Brown at six three, Hines six three, and both around 200. And here's the first down for Nebraska now, as the ball comes out to the 43. So the Huskers come out, steaming here to start the second half. The offensive unit line up there. Now they've slipped DuBose up into a wing position. Sunberg gives it back to him, and DuBose is loose on the sideline. They went to that set twice in the first half. This time, they give it to DuBose, and they had a wall of blockers set for him, and he turned in a big one. Reverses have been a vital part of the odds offense when you have a team like Oklahoma State that runs so effectively they are vulnerable to plays like this you can see no one was containing from the backside. Dubose has wide open sailing finally goes out of bounds 
And it's first down, Nebraska at the Oklahoma State 32. DuBose now with 87 yards on 14 carries. Here comes again. And as Tom Osborne said, they're going right at him on that particular kind of a play where it's just jawbone and muscle. But a defense runs as effectively as Oklahoma State. You would like to run right at him to pin him down. Those four, de three defensive linemen all run four, seven of them. Good speed, run at him, pin him down. That's what his game plan seems to be. Jeff Smith is the eye back now, giving DeBose a breather. From the 28. A yard. See the water flying around down there some today. It rained uh, hard two days ago, rained a little yesterday, and again last night. And it just simply doesn't seem to run off this field, although there is a considerable crown in this field. Keith, that's going to be surprising to see if Tom Osmond goes with a pass on this situation or runs twice for the first down. Third and about five. And DuBose is back at the eye back. Sunberg passing. It's intercepted. Intercepted by Mark Moore. That's his second of the day and the third by Oklahoma State. I don't know how you can time it any better than Blair has on the, these two pass patterns. He's going to come right up on the play. Mark Moore, this time 44. You can see that he times it, breaks, takes a chance, comes in front, catches the pass, and stops the momentum and gets possession for Oklahoma State. Pass intended for Jason Gamble, Oklahoma State's ball, just outside their 27, first down. They lead 3 to nothing. We're just starting the third quarter. This is Charles Crawford. And Crawford picks up four. The defense for Nebraska, Bill Weber is 6'2", 210. Danny Noonan, 6'3", 260. Ken Graber, 6'2", 245. Rod Stuckey, 6'3", 245. And Strasburger, 205 and a 6'1". Dahm stands in 6'3", 235. And Munford, 6'2", 225. Second down, six. He'll just pass, complete to Weimer. Weimer's got a first down at the 45. They had a bump in the backfield and almost messed up the play, but Rusty made it work. Dave Burke at the corner for Nebraska. 5'10", 190. Neil Harris, 6-footer, 190. Brett Clark, 6'3", 200, big fella. And Mike McCashlin, 6'1", 200. A note on Stuckey, Rod Stuckey, the defensive tackle. He is a graduate of Nebraska. He has already been accepted to the Harvard School of Business. Whoa, look at Crawford blow it upfield. So Nebraska had a good march going until the pass interception. And now Oklahoma State is responding with a strong ground game. Crawford big and strong, as we said early in the ball game. Just a sophomore. Six foot four, 230 pounds. Good speed. A kind of a reverse play. You see the tackles pull and lead on the play. Burke, number 10, brings him down. First down, Cowboys, Nebraska 45. Crawford again. Good cutback. If he kept his balance, he might have scored. How many times have we seen the momentum change? One team's going in to score as we look at Moore, who intercepted the pass. Team going in to score, they get stopped. The defense takes the field with their head down, and offense is all fired up, and you see a big change in the motion. Ten points might be a lot this game, Frank. Yes, it will be. Second down and one. Crawford going for the first down, and he'll have it. And a penalty flag. Well, well let's check on the penalty while you look at the offensive alignment that Oklahoma starts the second half with. Oklahoma State are moving back, so obviously the penalty's on them. Came a little late from the umpire. He was backed up a little bit. Keith, I couldn't believe it came so late. The play was virtually over when the flag was thrown. Maybe he couldn't find it. Well, 
<laughs> trying to figure out where the 10 yards That's exactly, exactly is. right. He, they, they... Here's John McClinic. Holding on the offense. That's Still Pil second down. Still has them 11 yards, though. It was very short yardage uh, for first down, and uh, they give them a good yard and a half. But another mistake at a critical time. That's seven flags and 60 yards. They were on the prowl. Now they're sitting back there, second down, and close to 12. Now yeah, let's stay with the eye back buffer. And he gets to the 45, and it'll be third down and 11. Mark Munford made the tackle. This is the second time now, and it looked like Oklahoma State was going to be able to blow the ball on down the field if they'd gotten into a series of mistakes and been turned away. Of course, they still possess it third and 11 here. Coaches go crazy, Keith, with penalties. You just, and they come at the critical time, second down and one, to get a 10-yard penalty. Got a throw here. Swing it out and throw it over the head of Crawford. So Hilger trying to touch the ball over to Crawford and get him outside over there. I don't know if Charles has been able to get much anyway because Nebraska people were running to the ball very well, and so Oklahoma State will punt it away. Instead of a first down on Nebraska's 32-yard line, they end up punting. What mistakes do for you? Take you right out of the threat. This is the sixth punt by Cooper. Dave Burke is the deep man for Nebraska, standing back at his own 10. He's got a chance on no, he's kicked this one. Well, Oklahoma State man ran it down and made the catch at the three. Robert Nunn finally caught up with it, and Cooper is finally able to kill one deep. And the Huskers will start with a goal line at their back, trailing three to nothing. First down from the four-yard line for Nebraska, and Travis Turner is back in at quarterback. Hands the ball off to the fullback, and Ratman bumps his way up to about the nine. Just to give you an idea that what's been going on with Nebraska's offense is Jeff Smith there on the sideline has hurt that ankle again. I don't think he'll be effective to come back in anymore today because he hasn't been effective as yet today. He just doesn't have his quickness. But the Nebraska offense has not scored in over five quarters. Now, it's been a long time since somebody told you that about Nebraska's football team. You can see how important by that last graphic that Smith is to this football team. Maybe the 12. O'Neill, number 99. Plays trap plays awfully well. He's just so quick, it's hard to stay, keep him blocked. You can see he takes on the trapper, holds his ground, and moves back in and helps on the tackle. Leslie O'Deal, all Big A Conference last year as a sophomore. And it's third down and two for the Huskers. Dubose is the eye back. Rathman the fullback. Or is it Porter? It's Scott Porter. Dubose has the first down out of the 16. Well, they just got in behind big Mark Frenowitz, Orton, and Griminger and ground it out. Now they've got a little room. Here's the crowd, 76,000, 133, consecutive sellouts. But Keith's exactly right. They run behind your best blocker when you have to make the first down. That's what they did on three consecutive plays. Changing the play at the line. And DuBose comes across the 20 near the 21. All of the Nebraska centers, and it looks to me like that uh, this fellow, Trainowitz, is about as good as the others have been, and DuBose is hurt, as you see there. 99, again, figures in the play. Leslie O'Neill. Let's watch and see the defensive play. He's blocked by Benny right there. He just won't stay blocked. The good defensive linemen come off of the block. They separate. Once they see where the ball carry is, that's why O'Neill is so successful. 21 tackles last year in this ball game. Who is that hurt? It's, it is DuBose. But these Nebraska centers have all been so quick coming off the ball, it looks like they're almost offside every time. They are just explosive. 
DuBose walking off the field, talking with those who had the trainers who had come out to assist him. We might see him some more today, but right now, Thurman Hoskins, the sophomore from Kearney, Missouri, a 200 pounder, has to come in at IVAC. And the injury problem continues for Nebraska. A whistle stops the play before Travis Turner is able to affect the roll to the right. When the quarterback comes in with a new snap count, the offensive lineman anticipated it and got in motion. Sun comes out bright and warm for them now, and it's the first time it's been real bright all day. But Hoskins at tailback has had one carry for five yards in the previous four football games. False start on the offense. It is still second down. But now it is second down and 11. You can see how just strong the Oklahoma State is, plus defense is. But you also can see there's some doubt in the offense at Nebraska since they haven't scored in over five quarters. Question themselves. Turner's still got it, run down from behind, and there again is an example of what Frank's been talking about. The Oklahoma State defense, so fleet of foot. O'Neill runs a 4 7 40, weighed 210 pounds when he came to Oklahoma State, but he has worked hard and gained weight. You can see what it means to run a 4 7 40 as a lineman. He just tackles the quarterback and throws him to the ground. Another great play by Leslie O'Neill. Yeah. Huskers are three out of nine on third down conversions today. They're looking at third and 11. Turner wants to throw, goes out here on the sideline to Jim Thompson. And Thompson cannot get the first down, and so Nebraska's going to have to punt the ball from deep in their own end as Mark Moore makes another play for Oklahoma State defensively. And the Cowboys should have pretty good field position if Riley handles it well. I want to tell you, Moore really put a tackle uh, on the ball carry on that last play. Just put the headgear right onto the numbers and down the ball carry with. Livingston, Scott Livingston, has kicked four times today, and uh, two of his four punts have been beyond 50 yards. I wouldn't be surprised to see Nebraska throw some for fourth down since the Oklahoma State is vulnerable against the pass. Gets it out. Cowboys are going to have good field position at their own 41 as Riley makes the fair catch. That was a 38-yard punt. 3-0. Cowboys lead the Huskers at 7.35 to go third quarter. Jim Lampley in New York. It is final in West Lafayette, Indiana, where Purdue has upended second-ranked Ohio State. The key play, a 55-yard interception return by Rod Woodson in the late stages, which won the ball game ultimately. Ohio State scored to make it 28-23, then threatened twice more, but couldn't come away with a touchdown, and the Boilermakers had their second big upset of the season. Back to Keith Jackson and Lincoln. As we come back here, Charles Crawford tries to turn the corner for Oklahoma State. And the spotters will give him a yard on that carry as Mark Munford brought him down. Dennis Watkins is in the defensive secondary now for Nebraska, replacing Neil Harris, who was hurt early in the ball game and has not been able to come back. I think we should mention again that Nebraska leads the nation in defense. Oklahoma State ranks fifth. Well, you said something at halftime about Oklahoma State playing a relatively conservative game, perhaps, if their defense was able to hold up and Nebraska remained indecisive in its offense. I think that's exactly what they're trying to do, and that's what Pat Jones said. We want to keep it three to nothing. Their defense is so good right now, they think that they can get some scoring opportunities from their defense without taking chances at all. It's third and eight. Dave Burke on Charles Crawford for a loss on the play. It brings up fourth down and long. I mean, there's conservative and there's conservative, Frank. That is very conservative. Watch the defense forces Crawford to break outside. He should have turned inside all tackle. He was just too impatient, and he went outside where there was no blocking, resulting in a loss. Pressure's on the kicker, kicking team now for Oklahoma State. 
You go into your shell, and the first thing you know, you're whooped. I've seen it time and time and time again. And this one takes a sideways bounce and finally kicks on down inside the 25. Not a very good kick by Cooper that time. It's going to roll dead at the 22, a 39-yard punt. So 5.40 to go in the third quarter. And let's see what happens. With Ohio State getting whacked today by Purdue, Texas and Oklahoma, Texas playing Rice today, the Sooners are idle. So we very well could be offering you one and two next Saturday here on ABC at 3.30 Eastern time. This quarterback Dodge of Texas has been the big surprise. Everybody having a great year. Doug DuBose is back in there at Ibach for Nebraska and runs for about two, maybe three yards. Two outstanding quarterbacks in that ball game, Keith Bradley of Oklahoma and Dodge of Texas. DuBose has now reached 100 yards and 18 carries. Oh, it, it, it's... Uh, you drag out any old cliche you want for that one, Frank. How many times have they played when they were ranked one or two in the nation? Lots of times. Second down and eight. Turner's pass is away to the sideline. Intended receiver Gamble fell down. It's wet on the sides of the field. And he just simply couldn't get a bite with his cleats and slipped down. Well, we're going to see the play as a rollout. Very safe. Tom Osmond's not taking any chances with Turner. Remember, Turner is the backup quarterback. He's only thrown 11 passes so far this season. The ball was a little bit low. Kimball loses his feet. The ball goes incomplete. The uh, defensives on both sides of the field today have been brilliant, I think. I the offenses are boring. The quarterbacks have not been able to out execute the defense on the passing game. You got it? Turner's pass again, same pattern, and that one is intended for Scott Kimball, and he missed him with that one. But you know, and I know, as long as we have known Tom Osborne, he's got something up his sleeve. He always has something in his playbook of the gimmick variety, and sometimes it works wonders for them. But remember the guard around play against Oklahoma a few how, years ago? How about against Missouri when they ran the bum rescue from, punt, Ruski, form yeah. from punt formation? You were doing that ball game by yourself. Andy Sedaris hadn't found it yet. <laughs> <laughs> that was a tremendous call by Osmond, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him do something. There's ten men on the line of scrimmage on every punting situation. Oh, that ball almost got away from Livingston. Slid right through his hands, but he held on, and this is Riley trying to effect a return. And he does get back to his 43. 39-yard punt, 6-yard return, and 4.56 to go in the third quarter. Oh, Oklahoma State has good field position. Ken Zachary and Charles Crawford will be the setbacks for Oklahoma State now as Rusty Hilger brings them up. They go double wide. Hilger hands it off to Zachary. Ain't no dancing room in the middle of those uh, in the trenches today, folks, I'll tell you. Here's the total offensive break on line. You can see what a defensive struggle it's been. Oklahoma State, only 71 yards rushing, and they're primarily and prefer to rush the football. Nebraska only 58 passing. You can see both well below this season average. Second down and nine. Blitz was on, and Hilger gets the flag. He tried to unload it, and Danny Noonan was left unattended on the left side, and as Hilger turned up to look upfield, Noonan arrived. Well, you're going to see the bottom of the screen, 95. Newman is just a sophomore. You're unblocked, I don't know, his naked bootleg. Now, Hilger's throwing the ball away. Catch the ground, Noonan! Of a forward pass, five-yard penalty, and a loss of down. The rule says that an eligible receiver has to be in the area of the pass. Those were both ineligible receivers. Referee made a good call. Eight penalties and 75 yards. But if they're not here to play, the ball is too loud. Great catch by Bobby Riley going high in the air and makes the catch up at the 47. But because of the sack and the grounding call, they are short of the first down. Riley gets a good push. The key to being a good receiver, do not telegraph where you're going to catch the ball. He had to jump 
and pull the ball down. Otherwise, it would have been intercepted by Burke, the safety man. Hilger is now past Tony Pounds as the all-time passer at Oklahoma State. And Cooper is in the punt. He had the too far off the ball. High hanger, that's a pretty good kick. Burke, fair catch, back at the Nebraska 16, another 39-yard punt by Cooper. So it's 3 nothing, and the Cornhuskers are struggling. Check in with Jim. Well, Keith, Alabama has narrowed the margin in the third quarter. This is the long run of 46 yards by Paul Ott Carruth. He's going to be dropped from behind at the one-yard line, but that set up Vince Sutton's second touchdown, 17-14 third. Back to you. Well, that turned out to be a pretty good scuffle. George and Alabama haven't played in seven years. This is the first time. Hand off to Doug DeBose. Cuts it over the right side. Four yards. Close to it. Nebraska still has a chance to break a long run play because of the gambling that Oklahoma State's doing. If they miss a tackle, with those safety men running out and playing man could be taken by the door. Second and seven. Well, that's just power on power as DeBose gets up to the 25. It's pretty tough to overpower Oklahoma State. They'll hang in with Kansas won a ball game today, beating Iowa State. And Arkansas has come back now to take the lead from TCU with Air Force beating Navy by seven in the fourth quarter. Third and two. Turner gives to the post to drop the first down. Up on the 34, Mark Moore made the saving tackle for Oklahoma State, and they had Dubos out there where he was one-on-one. -on -one. Turner, the quarterback, makes a good play on the option play. You keep the ball from the end zone, makes it to the fullback. Now he keeps the ball and waits to the last minute. As he's getting tackled right there, he pitches out, and you can see Dubos miss, make one man miss him before finally 44 Moore brings him down. Otherwise, he would have been all the way. First down Huskers, their own 34. Rockets showing some signs of coming to life every once in a while, but then Oklahoma State will come up with a big play. Double reverse, this is Swanson coming around. And Swanson picks up a first down as he gets out to the 47. You knew that Tom Osborne was going to go a little deeper amongst the pages of the playbook. Munger, number 90, is full of blitz. Number 90. Normally, he would have a pretty good play, but he gets booed. He hits the quarterback, but there's a double reverse. Not just a reverse, it was a double reverse for a big game. Low momentum now for Nebraska. It's only a 3-0 ball game. Oklahoma State leading with a minute 40 to play in the third quarter. They're working new both, aren't they? And he's responding as he crosses midfield. Nebraska has not done very well, obviously, with their possessions, and you can see... Uh, Nebraska can sort of show up right here what uh, what they've done with each possession during the ball game. Just a minute ago, we'll come back. Here they are. Ten possessions, punted seven, intercepted three, first down play. Not typical Nebraska. Second and six. Staying with two balls. And it's the first down at the Oklahoma State, 39. The power is beginning to take its toll. Seems to me that Oklahoma State are tired and Nebraska seems to be fresh. Oklahoma State has had their chances to score points. But every time they've gotten down there, they've made some kind of a mistake to mess up the chance. And they may pay for it. Turn to the quarterback. He's got about five yards. I think the reason that we are seeing Turner is his running ability. He mentioned that earlier. 
Uh, the quarterback option play is still one of the best in football. Turner makes a big gain on it right there. When it's second down and five, you have a lot of different ways you can go. Of course, there's the defensive signal call to make a decision, and it could be a bad one. Gambling, if Turner can take advantage of the gamble. This will be the last snap of the third quarter. Two goals is going to another. The last the first snap as he reaches the Oklahoma State 28-yard line. So we play 45 minutes. Oklahoma State leads three to nothing. We'll be back after this commercial message and the word from our local station. To the final quarter we go, Nebraska making its first real determined offensive surge of the day. DuBose is out of there and Hoskins is in. They've got to give him a breather. He's carried 24 times already. And Smith hobbling with that sore ankle. This is a handoff to Scott Porter, the fullback. And Porter will have a couple of yards. Well, we can see by the stats that Nebraska is gaining on the OSU. 12 first downs for Nebraska, where they were trailing in all of the first half. Nebraska is picking up momentum. They have now run about uh, 12 plays without a mistake. The defense is now counting on a penalty or a fumble. DeBose is back on second and eight. Turner's pass is complete to Todd Crane. It's first and goal, Nebraska at the Oklahoma State 7. It was Todd Crane that caught the touchdown pass that led Nebraska past Oklahoma State a year ago, 14 to 10 at Stillwater. And the tight end comes up with another big play, and these, this is the deepest Nebraska penetration of this game. First and goal from the seventh. Turner. Pass in the corner, no. Incomplete. That's no place to go. Travis dumped it rather than take the loss. That's one thing that Turner should not have done. He changed the play from the four-yard line. You will see it again. But he has a running play call. He stands there. You can see Dubose didn't get the audible for the last minute. Now he's running for his life and has to get rid of the ball. Ending up with second down and eight. He should have gone on it, kept his running play on. Second and goal. The shortest distance is still, is it? Yes. Well, we got a problem again. Nebraska moved the football downfield with good power running plays, which augmented by an occasional pass. Turner made a good run. Now they get down first and goal on the seven, and they start going back and forth wide. Keith, we talked about the option play on the goal line. It isn't very good when you have an all-out all rush coming. As you can see, number 91 is right there, Warren Thompson. Now Nebraska's really in the hole. Dale Klein has not kicked a field goal this year. O o Oklahoma and a State. timeout is now charged to Oklahoma State. They've only got 10 players out there, Keith. They recognize them. Well, it's a good place to have 12, not 10. <laughs> it is third down and goal, Nebraska. The ball is beyond the 14 of Oklahoma State. Nebraska has missed on the last seven third down attempts. And their place kicker, Dale Klein, is on the sidelines. He has not tried a field goal this season. They were trying to draw them offside. I think they were just trying to sit there and draw them offside. Used up to 25 seconds. They're five yards further back. Once again, Turner, the second string quarterback, is in the ball game, really under pressure for the first time ever at Nebraska. You let it get in? 
on the offense. It is still third down. I go back to the first down in eight. Nebraska had blocked them out, run the ball right up at them. They get down and try to change the play for a pass. Why for a in the world would you want to try to draw them offside when you're third and goal from the 15th? Then I, I, that blows my mind. Throws it to corner, and it is incomplete. It was close. Mark Moore, one more big defensive play for Oklahoma State on the ball thrown to Jason Gamble, and Jason almost came down with it. The key, I want the fans to notice, the key is the man, the, the defensive back, does not look at the ball until the receiver jumps. What, now when the receiver jumps, Moore turns around and gets his left paw and knocks the ball away. Yeah, but look at this. And, and up in the air, and he could have been caught for a touchdown. Didn't yeah. have control of it. It is a 36-yard field goal in the kitchen for Dale Klein. The heat's on the youngster. Boy, he nailed it. And it's good. So pick that. The sophomore from Seward, Nebraska. His first field goal try. Nailed it. The tie-up at 3-3. With Harry Roberts going deep for Oklahoma State. Keith, you and I talked earlier about the rich tradition of Nebraska having won so many games, coming from behind, what advantage it would be going in the fourth quarter if the game was tied for Nebraska. Oklahoma State has got to feel the pressure right now. They got a, oh, Klein slips and falls down. But he still gets a pretty good kickoff, and Roberts fumbles it and comes back to the 25. The Oklahoma State offense, to be utterly blunt about things, Frank, has got to put up right here. They've got to produce something. They haven't done much lately. They haven't done anything since the first quarter, in fact. They've made a few first downs. If you look at Georgia still leading Alabama in the fourth quarter, Oklahoma State moved the ball a little bit from the 30-yard lines, but uh, not when it really counted. Crawford is the eye back. Hilger gives it to him. Nebraska defense has given up nothing up the middle. Absolutely nothing during the ball game. As we look at Pat Jones, nervous, first year as a head coach, 4-0, chance to beat Nebraska, something Oklahoma State hadn't done since 1961. Now they've got to show something offensively. Second down and seven. Hilger's pass is complete for Crawford out of the backfield and a first down for the Cowboys out there, 46. Munford brought him down. Poised, poised by an experienced quarterback from the end zone. Watch Hilger. He's going to look at the wide receiver. He's covered. He's covered. He's covered. Now he finds Crawford right down the middle. That's what experience does for you. Finally hits Crawford. A big first down, something Oklahoma State desperately needed. Crawford coming this way. Oh, there's a collision. Fumble, and Nebraska's got it. McCashlin collisioned him, and Burke came away with the ball. As Crawford was going down, the ball squirted loose. And Nebraska may have just come up with a game winner right there. McCashlin, number two, is going to tackle Crawford. He's got the ball in the wrong hand. Leaves him vulnerable. He should have had the ball in the left side. Then he could have taken on the tackle with his right shoulder and avoided the fumble. Inexperienced sophomore. Huskers take over at the Oklahoma State 47. Dubose. Whoa, there's a head-to-head -head butt. Dubose stops at the 44. <laughs> Leslie O'Neill oh, no, and no, Doug no, Dubose no, no. met each other head-on. And that, folks, is a mismatch for Doug. The, the ball is wet, and Keith uh, Turner had told Tim Brandt down on the sideline that the ball is wet and as heavy as it can be right now because of the dampness on the butt ball. Turner thrills one to DuBose. Good at the 40. They need three yards for a first down, so it'll be third and three. 
Turner's beginning to look better and better, Frank. He showed a very quick release. He had to throw the ball out in the flat. But the wide receiver was open for a touchdown as Oklahoma State had gambled. But Dubo steps out of bounds for the completion. Dubose is out now, and Hoskins is back in at the I-back spot. Third and three. Porter is the fullback. Going to run uh, an option, but they unload the ball, and it is incomplete. And they're very lucky to get it back. Now Tom Osmond has the toughest decision of the ball game right now. Does he go for it on fourth down? No, he, yeah, no he's going to punt the ball. Time remaining, 11-23. I think that's a good call against the defensive caliber of Oklahoma State. Plenty of time left. Oklahoma State has done nothing offensively since the first quarter. They've had a couple of chances to score on the big plays, but really haven't moved the ball with any consistency whatsoever. Nebraska defense, number one in the nation, has dominated. Obviously, Livingston will try to kill it deep. Riley is back on his 10. Oklahoma State is looking for a pass. They don't have the five men on the line of scrimmage. They get a kick. Oh, yeah. Straight up to Dandy. It's down around the goal line where they're going to put it down. The touch was made back around the one. And they place it down just outside the five. So Oklahoma State now is in territory trouble. It was a great win for DCU and a tough one for Ken Hatfield. He's holding up under it, all right, Jim. He's got two hands with it. Here's Charles Crawford from the five, fighting his way up near the nine for a pickup of about four yards. They've got a double tight end alignment in the ball game now for the Cowboys. Try to punch it out and get a little breathing room. But as Frank noted, the offense hasn't done much for the last couple of quarters. A 3-3 ball game, and the time remaining is 10 minutes and 45 seconds. Lincoln, Nebraska. Now they've got the white people back in. Stay with the ground game, and Crawford's out to the 11. Nebraska man comes storming out of there with a ball clutched to his bosom, but he can't have it. Ne Nebraska has been able to double cover the wide receivers, meaning they put four men on two. They have seven men inside, and they've shut down Oklahoma State's running game with seven on nine offensive players. Here's the big psychological factor that favors Nebraska. They've got the fans behind them, and the quarterback's not going to be able to change the play. And this crowd is in the ball game. Boy, they know when to get involved. Like now. They give it to the fullback, trying to pop him out of there, and they won't give him the spot. He bounced across the 15. They spot him inside the 15, and it's fourth down for Oklahoma State. Fourth down in about uh, 18 inches. Well, you don't have any choice. You gotta oh, he's got to pick the ball. Kerry Cooper, 155 pounder, needs one of the big kicks of his young life right here. Not bad, but Nebraska will have pretty good field position. They're going to have great field position. They're going to score. James Swanson. Klein. Good. James 
Watson is eighth in the nation in punt returns. You can see why. He knows how to get right down the middle, picks up his blockers, and turns on the speed to where the kicker, Kuba, has no chance to make the play. Little sidestep and in by himself for the biggest touchdown of his life. With eight minutes and 51 seconds to play in the game, Nebraska 10, Oklahoma State 3. 8.51 to play in this defensive football game as Shane Swanson sprints 49 yards to make it a 10-3 Nebraska lead. And Klein will kick off Roberts, the deep man for the Cowboys. He may not get much out of this one. That's a high hanging punt. The coverage should be pretty good. But Roberts runs well and gets back out to the 22. Rusty Hill to the quarterback. For Oklahoma State is dressed on his shoulders. He's going to have to open up and throw the ball. They've got speed that their wide receivers and just haven't used them during this ball game. And the Cowboys have the ball down to Brunson gave one. He a uh, steer wrestler. Steer wrestler. So is his daddy. He used to ride a horse to school till he was in junior high. So did I. But that was a long time ago. Pass slides right through the hands of Jamie Harris. Incomplete. Looking back into that very bright sun, I doubt if he ever saw it. Ball got lost in the, in the sun. You know, it's a marvelous story. We get tired of the scam and the muckraking and the stealing and the cheating. And the, these are the things that you always hear about. But then up comes a guy like Stuckey, who's in the Harvard Graduate School of Business. And a guy like Swanson, who came out of a one-room schoolhouse to become a good student and a heck of a football player. And he may have just put his names in the Nebraska record book. Hilger keeps it. And Rusty runs it up across the 25 to about the 27. The momentum shifted in that fourth quarter. Oklahoma State had a three-point lead and didn't do anything with it. They went into a shell, which means that they just depended on their defense, but their defense got worn down. They got, to me, Keith, they got tired. And the tradition of Nebraska of winning so many football games just came forth in that fourth quarter. And one of the smart football crowds in the whole country that knows how to respond and when to respond. This crowd really works to help its team. And then they get very difficult for the opposing team. Hilger's pass bounces in front of the intended receiver. Graber was all over it. It is fourth down for Oklahoma State with seven minutes and 58 seconds to play in the ball game. And the Cowboys have got to kick it away one more time. Now you can see why Nebraska leads the country in total defense. That defense has been outstanding. Seven men, their front five and the two linebackers have shut the running game down completely. Burke drops back on the fair catch and accepts the ball for Nebraska at the 35. A 37-yard punt. <laughs> so now a tired Oklahoma State defense has got to come out and try to hold on to the shirt tail of an aroused Nebraska offensive team. Whenever there was a time for extreme measures right now for Oklahoma State. The National League Championship Series tonight. 8 o'clock Eastern time. Cubs lead the Padres three games to one. Here's a handoff on a little delay to Doug Dubose and Harding. Big Rodney Harding, number 42, nails him down right about the line of scrimmage. He might have even lost a half a yard on that carry. Nebraska's had two turnovers in the ball game, both on intercepted passes. They kept the ball well tucked into their arms and protected it as they ran in the traffic just as they did on the last play. Now the Oklahoma State defense you expect to really take chances, try to get them, force them into a passing game. Option, Turner. And he picks up a couple before Harry Roberts gets him. Now it brings up third and long, third and about eight. And an obvious passing circumstance. Well, you gotta remember now that Nebraska has given it up three times. Passing. I doubt if they'll throw the ball. Their defense is playing too good. If they throw something behind the line of scrimmage like a screen, I wouldn't throw it downfield against Oklahoma State. Well, they got him. 
Well back of the line of scrimmage, back at the 33, Leslie O'Neill and Warren Thompson. Boy, I can see why he's an all-conference player. I don't know why he's not an All-American on everybody's list. Well, he's just a junior, and I think Ooh. that he will be an All-American, if not this year, certainly his senior season. So Oklahoma State might come out of this exchange, Frank, with pretty good field position, unless Livingston booms one. Now, he kicked one early in the game for 57. He has a 42-yard average, and this is one place in the punting game that Nebraska has the sided edge. Riley is deep. That's a good one. High hang time is very good. Riley forced to fair catch it back at the 27. But still, not bad field position for Oklahoma State with five minutes and 53 seconds to play in the game. Be interesting to see Monday night at 9 whether or not the New York Giants have found any offense. They didn't have any last week against Los Angeles. And the 49ers are undefeated or rumbling into town. It's a key ball game for the Giants. It's first down Oklahoma State down at their 27. And Hilger hands it off to Crawford. And Crawford hits straight ahead to about the 29 for two yards and the clock rolling now at 5-4 to play in the ball game. I think the prevailing view of people against play Oklahoma State that they're not really a passing team unless they make their runs go. They've only rushed for 88 yards in this ball game. Therefore, they've been very ineffective with their passing. Well, they better start trying something. Time now is on Nebraska's side, and the defense in the red has just simply taken over the football game. He'll just pass his away downfield, and it is caught. Oh, it is caught. An incredible catch by Jamie Harris. It looked like Dennis Watkins had an interception. It's get it all locked up, and Harris came in and stole the ball. Hilger just throws it down the field, up the grabs, and you can see Harris came right in front and caught the ball in front of Watkins. Now, I slayed you to see what we mean by the offense having the advantage, running and looking back, and the defensive man having back to the last three. Actually, Watkins was going to intercept it. Oh, he, he thought he had it. Yeah. It's first down at the Nebraska 37, and the crowd gets a little quieter. Here's a little quick pop thrown to Malcolm Lewis on the sidelines. Nine yards on that play. As Malcolm had a little trouble controlling it, if he had grasped it cleanly, look out. He could have scored with the football that Oklahoma State, excuse me, Nebraska rushed. They had deep watch the defensive cornerback fire. There's nobody covering him. Burke is the only one, and Watson's the only one there to make the play. Can't believe they just blitzed the cornerback. But they need, did. Need about a half a yard for a first down. It might be time to go to the end zone. No, they stay conservative, and oh my gosh, they almost caught him behind the line of scrimmage, and he slides out of bounds. He's got enough for the first down at the 25. But here comes Charles Crawford wandering all over the South 40, and he's lucky he didn't get knocked down for a loss. That would have been a terrible thing if he'd have made the play. He made a bad decision, breaking outside on short yardage. That's the worst thing you can do. You're stripped of no blockers. The cornerback can come up, and you just couldn't make the tackle. We'll see it again. 32, just a sophomore. Had the first down. As he goes outside, the cornerback had him. Finally, Burke lets him get loose for the first down. At the 25. Crowd now getting its wind back, starting to make a little more noise. And Hilger back to throw. Rusty's pass is away. Overthrown. He had his tight end, Barry Hanna, wide open. He had to touch the ball in there a little bit, and he threw it too hard. Good point, Keith. The defensive cornerback is in front of the receiver. All he had to do was wait a fraction of a second or lay it up over the safety, strong safety, and it would have been a 15-yard gainer at least. Easy up here, though, ain't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> I don't have those big Nebraska linemen rushing at me. <laughs> That's right. Rusty clapped his hands, though. He knew it. Second and ten. Overthrown intended for Jamie Harris. Boy, that's a hard throw for a situation like this. All the way across the field to the sideline. See, I'd, I'd look for a back coming out of that backfield. Let him catch it and yeah, run Yeah, but with you him. know what, Frank? 
Nebraska's vulnerable on that side of the field now. When they've gone that way, they've had people open. Well, their starting cornerback has been hurt, and they've got a second team in there, and Watkins, number 27. Maybe that's what they're trying to do. Double coverage, both receivers. Third and 10. And the blitz. caught by Lewis, but Dave Burke got just enough of it coming across the field to defend on the play and help out, and Lewis couldn't bring it down. Lewis is going all the way across. He's 6'3". He does get his hands on the ball, but I guess Burke, number 33, the ball was thrown a little bit behind him, and I guess that uh, Burke did get his hands on it. Watch Lewis nearly grabbed it. He'd have walked in for the touchdown. The field goal by Roach. Is hooked to the left from 42 yards and missed. Roach misses from 42 yards in what could have been a very big three points. Someone uh, could have. Let's see if someone got their hand on the ball. I didn't see it. Roach is an excellent kicker. Now the ball's out of there clean. It had plenty of height. It was up around the top of the goalpost. They just hooked it. Well, the defense got the job to do again. Well, at least they got a chance to get a little breath. This is DuBose. And Nebraska doing what it does best, running behind that big offensive line, on just turning along on power, leading by a score of 10 to 3, with 4 minutes and 12 seconds now to play. Oklahoma State has two timeouts. They've used one. Nebraska keep the ball on the ground. Try if they throw something behind the line of scrimmage, they can run with it. Keep the ball in bounds and the clock running. Swanson, the wingback, goes in motion. He's the big star right now offensively. This is DuBose. And DuBose runs it up across the 35 for a first down. And uh, Doug DuBose now is piling up some numbers. 28 carries for 151 yards. Denning, number 73, has a good matchup with O'Neill. Of course, 65 is in there now, and uh, he's uh, Roth. That's Jim right. Roth, yeah. Jim Roth is in there. Blocked O'Neill pretty good. Got a little. He, Roth is only 6'1". Maybe he can handle it a little, little bit better. First down, ball out on the 36 for the Huskers. They lead by seven points. Oklahoma State's offside. Number 40 had encroached. He stepped into the neutral zone. James Ham, the Eagle linebacker, had stepped in there. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how they call this. Motion by Nebraska. Yeah. So he was teased in there. That's Once a, a defender sees that offensive man move, he just he's he's free to go. That's right, Keith. If he's within one man of, of the violator, had the deep penalty been on the defense. It's a false start on the offense. It is still first down. Pull back to the score. That they could have taken the play. Offense is dead immediately once the offense moves. That's Swanson wide to the bottom of the picture now at 315 to go in the ball game. DeBose earning his keep today. He's coming up on 30 carries in the ball game, and it's going to be second down and about 13. Keith, I guess we should comment on the fact that uh, Pat Jones decided to go for the field goal with slightly over four minutes to play on fourth down and 10. I think it's a good call. I don't see any reason not to do it. Well, they had enough time with their defense playing like they are. Nebraska's gone kind of into their shell, although they've used their power and made one first down, and that has really been damaging to Oklahoma State's chances. Second and 13. DuBose again. And now he's back to about the original line of scrimmage before the penalty where it'll be third down and 10, the tackle by Harry Roberts. Oklahoma State will have to use their, one of their timeouts after this next play if they're going to have any chance to win the ball. DuBose has run for 157 yards in the ball game today. The Oklahoma State running core has totaled only 91. That's how good the Nebraska defense has been against the run. Turner back, shoots a little shot over the middle, the pass is completed. 
to Jason Gamble. And Gamble is on his way. Touchdown, Cornhusker. Gamble from Santa Barbara, California, a freshman. Line kick is good. At one minute and 49 seconds to play in the game, it's 17 to 3, and here you watch the play and listen as the large door starts to slam. Gamble is hit just as he as the ball gets there by the right cornerback. It uh, didn't phase him at all, and he shows what speed he has as he outruns the entire Oklahoma State secondary, just the freshman. So Nebraska's tradition, they're winning so many games, is paying off. We'll On be right back. coming weekend. But only 149 to play in the ball game. 17-3 Nebraska, two big plays. Won a 49-yard punt return by Shane Swanson. A 63-yard reception by Jason Gamble after a bump by the cornerback outran the world into the end zone, and that's where we are. Keith, I think we should mention Tom Osmond's gamble by changing quarterbacks. And Turners look very good. This is Harry Roberts. Fumbles the football. Nebraska's got the football, and they're going to put it down back at the 16-yard line. Brett Clark. Number 10. Well, let's look at it again, see exactly what happened. Normally when uh, kickoff returns, when you stop and start and start looking for, for extra uh, yardage, you can see that the ball was knocked out first by one Nebraska man loosened, and then the second Nebraska man knocked it out. Roberts is not used to carrying the ball. He's a defensive end. Didn't protect it. Just outside the 16. The handoff goes to Thurman Hoskins. And Hoskins pounds down to about the 11. It's about a five-yard pickup. We've seen a very courageous Oklahoma State team stay in there. Couldn't make anything happen offensively. Nebraska with their great defense. Offense finally beginning to gel under the backup quarterback, Turner. Turning it on and winning in the fourth quarter. Minute 10 to play. Whistle stop him. Hoskins is loose and gone, but Whistle just stopped it. That's Keith Jones. Keith Jones, freshman, number 24. Penalties against Nebraska. Tom Osborne now sending a bunch of new people, fresh people onto the field, young people. Next Saturday, Texas and Oklahoma. Texas playing Rice. Last right. start on the offense. It is still second down. Ohio State losing to Purdue today. So Oklahoma was ranked three going in. And we think we probably have number one and number two going at it at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas next Saturday afternoon. The ball comes back to the 16. Second down. Nine. Hand off in the middle to the fullback, Scott Porter. And Porter picks up two or three. In the first half, Nebraska had 112 yards. In the second half, the Cornhuskers 226 yards. Well, the power as Tom Osmond made a good decision, two good decisions. One, he said, we're going to run at him and pin him down, which he did and was successful. And as Keith mentioned, the wear and tear just uh, had a big effect on uh, Oklahoma State. But changing quite as a coach, I'm telling you, Keith, changing the quarterbacks is a gamble. Yep. You really, you really leaving yourself vulnerable to um, ruin the morale of your football team. Tom thought it was necessary, and Turner came through for him. Hoskins runs it down to the 10, and they don't have to snap it again. It is over. Oklahoma State adds one more year to that list of years in which the Cowboys have not defeated the Nebraska Cornhuskers. The game is over. Nebraska wins it 17-3. 
with two big plays in the fourth quarter. Up to that time, it was a tremendous defensive struggle. So I guess Tom Osborne knows something more now than he did this morning about the character of his football team. They showed tremendous character. Here's Tim Brandt. All right, Keith, I'm with Tom Osborne, and Tom, what a ball game. You gambled, you went after it, uh, you opened things up a little bit and turned it around quickly at the end. Uh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State has great people. They got a great defensive football team, and we knew it'd be awfully hard to move the ball on them. Uh, our defense played a great ball game, and our kicking game was really excellent today, and we thought those would be the two phases of our game that would be improved. Our offense is struggling a little bit, but we did get some big plays, and so it was a great ball game, and kind of like we thought it would be. Tom, we talked at halftime, and the games they were playing up front and the blitzes were troubling your offense, but then it seemed to, to open up a little bit. What adjustments did you make? Well, nothing. We, we were ready for the blitzes. It's just kind of a matter of seeing them and getting the timing and audibling. We checked a little bit, and uh, but it's basically people. They got great people, and no matter how you line them up, they're awful good people. I know you were very concerned about the team coming back after a loss. You wanted to see how they would react. I guess they reacted uh, with a gut check. Well, this is the best team we've seen this year by a, a large margin. We'll be one of the best, maybe the best team we'll play all year. So we're really pleased to get by them. Okay, Tom, thank you. Congratulations. Back upstairs to you, Keith. All right, Tim.